When I say that a book is in the public domain, what does that mean to you? The meaning of public domain in English is that it is available to the public, to the people, without any copyright. So according to American copyright law, a book enters the public domain 70 years after an author's death, 95 years after its publication, or 125 years from its creation date. Now, whichever happens first is when the book will become available to the public, right? To us, meaning that it can be altered and distributed. It's yours or mine to use. A collection of 59,500 books have been digitized and made accessible online by Project Gutenberg, a well-known nonprofit based out of the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. So when Michael Hart started Project Gutenberg in 1971, he was just a college student at the University of Illinois. He had unlimited use and access to a university computer, the Xerox Sigma 5, and decided to do something useful with that time. He thought, why not give a gift to the world? So he set a goal for himself. By the year 2000, he wanted to digitize 10,000 books. 10,000 books that had entered the public domain. So what better publication to start with than the heavily referenced Declaration of Independence of the United States? So that was his first digitized document. Hart called the project Project Gutenberg after Johannes Gutenberg, a German inventor and creator of the movable type printing press. After all, Gutenberg was an inspiration to him. He had enabled the creation and distribution of physical books as early as the mid-1440s. Now, Hart was going to distribute already existing books in online formats and digital formats to audiences in all corners of the world. The goal was to, quote, encourage the creation and distribution of ebooks. Not just that, though. He wanted to make them in as many available formats as possible. Michael saw the electronic versions of books a simple way to promote literacy, right? The ability to read and to protect originals from catastrophe, right? So think about it. A library with first edition books or a museum with original documents could burn down. But a system set up with a ton of different servers? No way. So they would always be accessible. They're in safe keeping. So in the beginning, the process was very slow. I mentioned Xerox, right? Page by page, these texts were photocopied. But as time passed, the technology improved. And so did the number of people interested in helping Hart reach his goal. So as of right now, July 2019, the project is just shy of 60 thousand available books. You're probably thinking, hmm, that's wonderful. How does this affect me? So you, as an internet user, have access to all of these books too. They're online. You also have access to their close partners at LibriVox, which contains free audiobooks of titles in the public domain. I just checked and there are free audio files for over 13,000 books on their website and you can access these. And the thing is, they're not bad books, right? So there are a lot of wonderful books in the public domain. Although you won't find new releases, there are a lot of ones that are very popular. Some that are would be great for an English learner at an intermediate level would be, you know, Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, or The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. There are also some more challenging books on there, such as War and Peace, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, Pride and Prejudice, A Tale of Two Cities, and that's just to name a few. So there's a list of the top 100 ebook downloads on their website, and I highly recommend checking it out. And there's also other links for for finding out which ebooks were most popular in a month, which ones had the most downloads, so you can see what's hot and what's not. You can search by author, title, genre, which means subject, essentially, or language, although there are far more books in English than in any other language. So I hope you found this useful. If you're interested in helping out the Gutenberg Project, you're more than welcome to go onto the website and you can uh, record your own voice 
for an audiobook through LibriVox. You can also join the online community of proofreaders called the Distributed Proofreaders. If you're interested, you can go ahead and check that out.、Um, and you can also learn English on there. So you can literally learn English by the book. So since 2002, volunteers from all over the world help proofread and digitize these free books with the intent of bringing literature and enjoyment of reading to people around the world. It's a wonderful project, and I hope you also find it useful. Hope you enjoyed, and until next time, bye. 